Well, we figured I'd sneak out here and uh, put this motor together and turn the camera on. So how's everybody been doing? It's been a while since I've made a video. I don't know if I remember how to do it, but uh, I have this little uh, bus motor. Little motor I'm gonna put together. Uh, it's got a C35 cam in it with a new A and A 1600 piston cylinders, 85.5s. Uh, it's got a nice set of uh, heads. Did a little port work on. Got some uh, valve springs and retainers. Valve job. Got a uh, stop crank, non counterweighted. So it's got a set of forged rods. Had some donated, so I decided to use them. Uh, that's about it. It's a pretty basic motor. Little uh, 1600 with a cam and supported heads. Uh, I was thinking about maybe putting some fuel injection on this. They have a little two barrel unit. Uh, this guy named uh, Rodney has got a company called Rad Industries out in California and he makes a little uh, two barrel manifold. And I've heard good things. Uh, the fuel injection units are sold out right now. Uh, I was looking online, but uh, that or a single two barrel, something basic. Uh, you know, the fuel injection adds a little cost, but some people don't mind spending a little money or they don't have to adjust stuff or if it's a little more modern, so I don't know. So anyway, I'm just gonna put this together. I'm gonna do a lot of talking or anything. You've got to see this a bunch of times. Just uh, thought I'd turn the camera on, say what's going on. A little uh, cam lube provided in the uh, cam when you buy a SCAT camshaft. Most cam manufacturers have lube. I always clean the lifters off really good before I put this on so it sticks good to the lifter. If you got any kind of oil on the lifter, this stuff can slide off. Little tip. This is good stuff, it's really sticky. But yeah, put this together. I think uh, CT might come over today and we're gonna put his Type 4 together or work on it. Had to uh, do some stuff with the cylinder heads on that. He bought some new cylinder heads and uh, they need some EGR plugs. And uh, we had a valve spring issue because he ran a, uh, we went with a webcam 86B. And the uh, camshaft was a little too big for the stock valve springs. It was to a coil bind situation. So uh, we called Web up and they uh, sent us some really nice single springs for the type four head. They had some. and. Uh, we went with those and they seem to work really well. They installed nice, got nice pressure. Plenty of travel. Using the uh, scat lifters. Got a little lifter notch there that I like to do. Just putting a little uh, assembly lube on the lifters. I don't know how long this is going to sit around before it gets sold. So the uh, views seem to have gone up on the videos. I want to say uh, thanks for watching the videos. Uh, I appreciate it. And uh, I think the videos are better when CT does them because he edits some and stuff. This is going to be sort of raw for sure because uh, I don't possess any of those skills. But uh, yeah, that's what's been going on. Been helping him with his projects, the Dragon. And, Hans has been hanging out. He bought a uh, 250 or 350Z. We've been working on that. And uh, he put an angle kit on the front of it, a uh, turn brake, and a seat, and some other stuff, suspension stuff. I have to uh, do some body work on the car. It's got a damaged quarter panel on it.
sure it'll get damaged again being that it's a drift car, but we'll make it look nice for the first time anyway. So uh, pretty basic here. I'm going to go ahead and install my uh, bearing in the case here. Get this out of the way. Put a little lube on these lifters before I forget. the lid guys. Do you see where I set that stuff down? There it is. Best place to hide something is right in front of me. You can see this stuff's really clingy, but it's important to have the face clean or it's not clingy doesn't seem to want to play nice with any kind of motor oil, which makes sense, you know, that's the whole idea is for this stuff to, uh, form a cushion on break-in between the cam and the lifter. I'm sure there's, uh, all kinds of cool stuff in this that I can't tell you about, but we'll go ahead and loop the cam up too if you want to do that. that uh, Lubed up. We got a scat gear on there. We uh, torque cam bolts. I use a little Loctite on this. Good idea. If you'd like to. Should be sufficient. Cap this stuff up and uh, put it in a special place and never be able to find it again. We'll leave it out in the open. Alright, so what I want to do next here is uh, set this out of the way, I guess. We're going to put the bearing in. Groove bearing goes in the case. I guess everybody knows that. You want to line the hole up, make sure, you know, it's reasonably close. close. This case has a uh, 20 cut on it. First line bore. Nice case up, the bearings are good, everything's pretty nice. So we got cam bearings in place, we have our dowel pins in here. We've installed our center bearing. I'm going to go ahead and put a little oil on the uh, cam bearings. Excuse my oil bottle, it's a little dirty. Let me clean that up. Just a little Castrol 2050. Uh, I'm going to use assembly lube on the cam bearings. There's, uh, motor oil is fine on these. You want to use some assembly lube, I guess you can. It's personal preference, I do believe. I don't think there's a right or wrong way, so. A little oil on the main bearing. So we got a little bit of oil in there, we can go crazy. Got our lifters scooped up, got our uh, cam bearings lubed up. We'll set this off to the side on CT stuff. We need to put a little aviation permatex, is what I use under these. I don't like to put in the, uh, Silicone inside the case. Try not to, anyway. So we'll uh, stir some of this stuff up. Try not to make a mess. I usually just uh, put a little down here in the where the O-ring sits, not on the uh, main surfaces, but in the O-ring groove. Just 
stick the uh, stick the brush in there with a good amount and just with the drain in there. It goes down around the stud there and uh, keeps you from having any oil leaks in there. It's just overkill. I don't really think that this is a major oil leak issue anyway in here. I just don't like oil leaks. So. I try to take all the precautions. One more to go here. There we go. I'm going to get something to slide these down because uh, I want to touch them. 13 millimeter wrench works good. To take care of that. Cap that up because when this stuff gets spilled, it's a real mess. Alright, so we got that lube, we got the dial pins, and we got the oil on. We should probably install the cam bearing next at this point, our cam plug. Do that next, make sure it fits, it's all cleaned up. I like to put the uh, open side facing out. Uh, some people like to put this side facing out. It's personal preference, I do believe, but you get something loose in the uh, bell housing area, a clip comes off the uh, release bearing or something like that and gets tangled behind the flywheel. If it's turned this way, it can rip a hole in it. And when it's turned this way, it, it has a little bit of uh, protection. So that's the only uh, reasoning behind that. That's why I put it in the way I do. I don't know what the manual says, and I know that uh, drives a lot of you crazy. Put a little uh, silicone on the cam plug. And place it down in there. Keep it on the, uh, you know, this side of the groove. Don't get in your bearing. When you put the plug in, it sort of acts as a dam between the bearing and the silicone, so it's not protruding out there. All right, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, put a little sealer on here. I like to put a little dab on each corner of the cam plug and I wipe the top of it. Again, a little dab right there will do you. Now when I put the silicone on, when I use it, uh, I try to uh, stay away from the uh, inside of the case. You know, just apply it towards the uh, outside edge. That way when you uh, tighten Tighten it down, it doesn't squeeze into the inside of the engine case and uh, it doesn't get in your oil pump, into your bearings and all that good stuff. So basically just keep it in line with the studs or below it. And you should be good, as long as you don't get too carried away with the amount. This stuff does, uh, when you torque it, it spreads. You don't need a lot of it. And uh, I used to use the Aviation Permatex like we used on the O-rings, but I found that it's uh, not like it used to be. It seems to get brittle. 
and when it gets brittle, it, it leaves the uh, case apps and you have leaks. So I still use it in the oil pump area, some parts of the motor, obviously, but uh, technology's changed. I know guys want me to use the anaerobic sealer. I just haven't tried it yet. I'll uh, I'll give it a try any day now. For now, we're using some good old Permatex black oil resistant on this one. Normally I used the gray, but uh, they didn't have any, so I'll with this. Keep it on top of the uh, dowel pin. That's another good uh, way to judge it. And then parallel with the studs, you know, or above it, and uh, you won't have any issues with silicone getting in anything. I do both halves of the back of the case, just for uh, you know precautions. Can't get back here once it starts leaking always seems to leak at the back of the case for some reason. Probably because that flywheel's slinging around back there all the time, you know. Put a little bit in the groove, just the groove. We already have some silicone on the plug and then we have some on each corner, so you don't need to get too excessive on that half of the case. I think that's good. Go ahead and cap this up, we got the case Sealed in the back, double sealed, and we ran a bead all the way around this this bottom piece. We put a little aviation Permatex on below our uh, O-rings, and we put a little bit up here. That stuff was creeping on me. Got it. Got a little too much back there. It's good now. All right. So I guess uh, we'll put the uh, crankshaft in next. I'm going to get another rag because uh, once you get silicone on a rag, it's like uh, impossible to wipe your hands with it. So next, got our bearing in there. We'll unscrew the crank and put the rear bearing on that. And go from there these over here so I don't forget this. Put our lifter clips in so when we pick our case up we will be okay. Alright, I'm going to walk in front of the camera probably ten more times. Sorry about that. One of the questions I get asked a lot on this channel is, uh, what's uh, holding that crank on the, the bench? It's a uh, Berg forged gland that welded to the bench. I know that's pretty dangerous, and I know they make crank holders, because I've seen them on YouTube, some really nice ones. But I do not possess one of those, so that's, that's what I use. I'm sure one day it's going to break off, probably when I have the most expensive crank in it, when you're torquing the rods on there. Every once in a while it scares me. Eventually I'll uh, buy some equipment when I grow up. Alright, so the dowel pin towards the back, towards the flywheel, always. I did polish the beams on these just to you know, try to make it a little nicer and uh, balance them. But uh, other than that, the stock I have a uh, aftermarket bolt, ARP bolt, and uh, it's a three-eighths bolt. So 
we torqued them up. Uh, originally, it had some bolts in it that weren't too good, so we got them straightened out. Though. So let's go ahead and drop that in, and uh, we'll move on to the camshaft. try to uh, get the rod straight with the bearing that I'm working on so as I'm turning it I can uh, rest my hand on the studs and lift up on the rod a little bit so the bearing is turning without any you know, damage being done to it. Same with the front, just stick your finger in it, lift up on it. Now I'll take and rotate it like so. Just push down on it. Now we're going to check our uh, crank to make sure it's seated in the case with our other bearing half shouldn't rock, it should sit flat on there. If you get any kind of movement on this bearing, you should probably start over. Make sure your dowel pins are uh, lined up and everything's good. Make sure you have the correct bearings for your line bore on the case. Uh, the bearing shouldn't rock at all. So We're good there. We're ahead and uh, pop this in the other case half now. That's why I don't have it in there. I always use this for a uh, final check. So now we're going to install our camshaft next. And the the uh, cam marks are opposite of the uh, keyway, so just rotate the keyway to the top of the case and that will get you close before you grab your cam. Go ahead and find our mark on the cam. And, uh, you know, I'm blind. I should have a flashlight for this. So we got a uh, single dot in between the two dots. You'll have two dots on your uh, crankshaft gear and one dot on the camshaft gear. I like to rotate it at this point, give it a revolution or two, one way and then the other way. Make sure that the cam gear doesn't crawl out. If the uh, cam gear tries to crawl out of the case, then you might have a, an alignment issue between these two gears here. They make a plus and a minus on the gears so you can adjust it a little bit and sometimes when the case is line board it does get aggravated so You saw when I first started turning it, it tried to jump out of the uh, case, but I think it was just because it grabbed the oil. It seemed to be fine when I rotated it through the cycles.
Yeah, it does look like it jumped out of the uh, the correct timing position though when it did that. So I have to uh, put the glasses on, look a little closer, make sure this is correct. You only get one chance, you know. That's before you bolt it together. So let's take a look. And in fact, it did uh, when it when it made that initial jump. It, Came out of time. Rotate it again just to be safe. And we're for sure going to check it one more time. We're good now. So that was, uh, you know, that can happen. Just want to catch it. Well, you always check everything one more time before you uh, put the case apps together. All right. I don't want to wear those glasses for too long. I'll fall over while I'm making the video. All right, I'm going to put my lifter clips in this half of the case, and I think we're about ready to uh, put these case apps together. Let's see what we get. <clears throat> that bearings installed all the way. Alrighty. Now I'm gonna uh, try to make these rods stick. But they won't because we're making a video so they're gonna keep falling over and making me look bad. Put a little oil on them, and I uh, hope we get them to stand up for a minute, right? Squeeze them together, sometimes that works, a little trick. silicone again that I thought I was done with. Oh yeah, put it over here. Nope. See, I lost the silicone. It's got to be right out here in front of me. Alright, let me find that. Just blend it in. Okay, I'll do. So we're going to go with our uh, six main stud bolts and uh, these washers have a, a flat side and a round side they're not ground on both sides so put the flat side down towards the case I put a little bit of silicone just on the bottom of the washer yeah. Have it around there. Not too much. Squeezes in the. Uh, it's all about sealing the threads up, you know. We're using the washer, we use the uh, sealing nuts. Try to make all the precautions we can. Technically, you never have one of the top ones leak anyway. It would always be one of the bottom ones, so. Also, I like to put a little silicone around the uh, two camshaft uh, journal studs, which are in the back of the case. I 
they can with a little oil. So you put a little silicone down there under your spring washer, put your nut on, and uh, it usually works out pretty good as far as getting leaks back there. Yeah, this thing probably stopped recording an hour ago. I don't know. I thought I'd make an attempt anyway. All right, one, two, three, four, five, and six. These are the uh, ceiling nuts. I do not put the plastic down and I do not remove the rubber or the uh, larger. This is the way I was always taught to use them. Some people turn these over and take this washer off, and that's never a good idea. Uh, besides not being taught to do that, every time one of those motors comes in, it pulls the stud out when you loosen the hardware. And as soon as that plastic gets beat out, the stud is, the, the, the nut is loose. So you lose your torque as soon as you lose the, uh, the plastic. And the other thing is it's not very or, uh, accurate when you torque it, you know. So there's a couple things that aren't, there's no reason to turn the nut upside down like that and uh, take the washer off and try to jam the plastic down in the stud. It's just not necessary. If you're really that worried about it, you can, uh, Put the applicator on the end of the silicone tube, make it really fine, and fill in around the stud, and uh, put the washer down, and, and you're going to be much better off. You'll have a more accurate torque reading, and you're not going to compromise your main studs. And once those come loose, you start losing oil pressure. Uh, just it's a, you know, obviously the case starts leaking. Just a uh, cascade of problems. So at this point, I always like to make sure they still turn over. So, uh, I got my uh, pulley that Matt gave me. That's always a good sign. So we'll go ahead and uh, torque these down. 27 foot-pounds, you can refer to your manual for uh, torque, torque specs. I'll do it. Lock her down and torque them up. to go around and you know I, I work my way up to the torque just try to tighten it evenly in a crisscross pattern times to make sure they're tight and everything feels good. The stud's not pulling out of the block. Yeah. Still rotates, that's always a good sign. We'll go ahead to our uh, smaller hardware. We'll leave it out in the front. We still need to uh, get our oil pump out of the parts trailer. We haven't done yet. So next will be our uh, spring washers. First thing I'll do so I don't forget is uh, seal up these back two studs. Uh, these go right to oil. These are the studs that the cam rides in between. So the cam journal bolts, studs, they're not bolts. So 
Some of you guys, uh, you know, that have been watching the channel for a while know that Sometimes I uh, misplace words or say the wrong word. So I'm uh, doing the best I can, you know. I caught a uh, Mitchell wheel in my face, broke my neck, and blew my arm off. So I was never supposed to function again, so I'm doing pretty good. But we need some uh, nuts now. I like to uh, use new hardware, but I don't know. I seem to have a hardware shortage at this present time so I had to clean the old hardware up on this one got some new bolts for where you'll see them and uh, you know I had these in stock I've gone to a couple places now and a lot of the stuff is out of stock currently so uh, just try to deal with the situation the best we can until things get a little more normal again that's why I started building these core motors that I had because you can't buy cases and uh, people seem to want motors so I thought I'd build a few and uh, put them, get them in stock and then try to take them to a show or something and sell them because I don't want to put them in cars anymore, I don't want to work on cars anymore, I'm just uh, to the point where I can't do that. I mean, I help other people work on their cars, but I mean, I can't do it for a everyday thing, and uh, I don't have the space. And I'm trying to uh, clean the shop up to uh, get some equipment where I can just concentrate on motors and transmissions. So I've been trying to buy as many cores as I can possibly get, and, uh, you know, go from there. Of course, the uh, pretty nuts that I have here uh, seem not to be metric. So. That one is. Maybe this one's just uh, being stuck. So anyway, that's the deal with the motors. Uh, I was trying to get the shop set up where I can uh, streamline stuff. I got the uh, glass beater working again. Got that going. I need to get a uh, parts washer. And uh, that'll be it. Uh, I'd like to buy some new valve grinding equipment, but stuff's working okay. 